It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. So he said, I know whom I have believed, not just what I believe. I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded he is able to keep what I've committed to him. And there's He's a keeper. so many things in your life that he is able to keep once you commit it to him. In other words, it won't continue to harass you once you say, Lord, you're able to keep this until that day. He's our keeper. He's able to keep you. Second Timothy 1.12. The next one is Hebrews 7.25, like which is one of our favorites, which we did the last program. But it says, He is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by Him, seeing He ever lives to make intercession for them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't you love that verse? You know, that, thing, that makes me think of, I have a friend, her, one of her grandchildren was just really caught up in drugs and just living on the street. And he left where, she, you know, her, her care, <laughs> where she could touch him. He left and went far away to another state. And he got in a huge city, got out there by himself. He's living on the streets, mm. doing all kinds of drugs. There was nothing for my friend to do except say, God, I know you're able to save him mm. to the uttermost. And I'm going to have confidence. I'm not going to worry about mm. him. I've done everything, and I'm committing him to you. Yeah. And I tell you what, not long ago, he came back. He came back he's home. Back. He's in church. And he's in church serving the <laughs> Lord, going to Bible school. He's a different yeah. young man. God is able to mm. save your children, yeah. your grandchildren, those you love, yeah. to the uttermost. Amen. And so... He ever lives to make intercession mm -hmm. for us. That if God is for us, who could be against us? He never him? quits praying. Yeah, he is praying. So when you and I pray, we are partnering with Jesus yes. in intercession yes. to save, deliver, and heal people and family in mm -hmm. our lives to the uttermost. That's right. To save, deliver, heal, restore to the uttermost. So when we pray, it says the Holy Spirit takes hold together with us. Yes. And so Jesus is our intercessor in yes. heaven. And the Holy Spirit is our intercessor in our hearts. Yes. And so you are joined together, heaven and earth, for the will of God to be done when Satan is doing everything he can to destroy the yes. person. And yet Jesus said, I have prayed for you. I have prayed for and you. And when you are converted then God's going to use you to strengthen the brethren. Amen. And that's what Jesus told to Amen. Simon. That's what my mom, she always says, I'm praying for you. And yeah. I love that. But then she adds this, somebody else is praying for you and it's really good. That's Jesus. He Amen. never stops praying for you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right, that's Hebrews 7.25. Yeah. You just can't get to the end of that one. But Hebrews 2.18 says that Jesus, he himself, and you know the word himself is used oh, a lot in the book yes. of Hebrews Matthew. and Matthew. Yeah. Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Mm -hmm. And then in uh, Hebrews, himself, who his own self in First Peter, bore our sicknesses. Yeah. And so we're talking about Jesus here. Himself, Jesus, yeah. suffered and he was tempted but he is able to secure or save or to assist or relieve those who are being tempted. Mm. So when you're in a situation and a struggle and a challenge with temptation and adversity, he is able to assist and run to you immediately. He's so personally involved. Wow. Himself. Thank you, Jesus. 
just look at that himself. word. Himself. Let it sink in. He doesn't himself. send an angel, you know. No. He, he says, I am personally fully committed and to helping you overcome. He sent the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm leaving, but I'm sending the Comforter. Oh, and yeah. He's with you always. Yeah. He will help you. Yeah. And He will not leave you. Yeah. He won't leave you like an orphan. <laughs> and He will be in you forever. He's with you Himself. <laughs> his commitment, His commitment to you. And He is able. <laughs> yeah. He is able to assist you, relieve you. To run you, to your cry. Rescue you, to bring you out of a situation where you would have fallen and not right. been able to get up. But Jesus was tempted in all points like we are he overcame in all points, and He is able to assist you to overcome in any situation. It's kind of like uh, when you take those vaccines. The vaccine has been proven yeah. to uh, overcome. overcome. Yeah. Or in your own blood, the antibodies that are in your blood, mm -hmm. those antibodies are produced by you overcoming a disease. Yeah. And so you have those antibodies in your blood. An antibody is <laughs> called a memory cell because yeah. it remembers how it defeated that disease last right. time. So when that disease shows up, the antibodies, boom, rush to the scene. I talked to a doctor the other day. He said the coronavirus, you know, in our area anyway, so many people have been exposed to it yeah. and have overcome it yeah. that it's no longer a threat. It doesn't have the power that it once had. Right. Because so many are carrying the antibodies. Right. And that's one way they help someone to overcome the coronavirus is they take the blood of someone who had it and overcame it and they give that blood to the one who is having the symptoms. So we of no longer have fear. So we're not afraid of we've it. We've got the blood of Jesus <laughs> who has already carried and overcome. We have no fear. Every sin, every <laughs> disease, and we're free from fear. Hallelujah. We have a spirit of faith. Hallelujah. We have a spirit of faith. Amen. All right. Then the next one is Romans 4, 21. What does that one say? And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Ah, so again, we're trusting in his ability that what God has promised, he has the ability to perform that and to bring it to pass. And so you don't just have a promise, but you have God who made the promise. He's a performer. He watches his word to perform it, mm -hmm. that it shall come to pass completely. So he is able to perform what he has promised. And I like to think about uh, throughout the Bible, God does some pretty amazing things. Performance. He's dramatic. <laughs> sometimes he likes a good drama. <laughs> sometimes you know the crescendo of the events, you know, comes up, and you're like, "What is going to happen?" And here comes the performance of God. <laughs> and you're like, "Wow, look at God!" Like Moses, here comes all the Egyptian army. What are we going to do? Yeah. There's the Red Sea. God said, "Hold on, now hold up your rod. Yeah, Use I've your already. authority. Yeah. Use your faith. Have faith in me." Yeah. And God did something no one could do. And when he held out his rod, God he said, is able. what is that in your hand? Then what happened, it says the scripture that God blew with his nostrils. <laughs> so, so what happens is the wind of God, God blew with his nostrils and the Red Sea opened up and they went across on dry ground. Wow. And so the water stood up on each side. God just blew his nose. <laughs> <laughs> God can whip your enemies just by blowing his nose. So, so God, he just blew like that. He makes a way And of the escape. water stood up. But he did not do that without Moses doing his part. Right. He had that authority and he held out the rod. And so God is not just a promising God. He's a performing. He is a performing God. You will see his faithfulness. Right. Amen. Amen. The scripture in uh, Psalmist David said, said, I would have fainted, but I believe to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. In other words, I would have collapsed, but I believed to see the goodness. In other words, I don't just have a promise. I believe God will perform that promise and I will see it in my lifetime. 
Hallelujah. So that is Romans 4, 21. I believe to see. That yeah. would be a good thing to put on your refrigerator, yeah. whatever it is. Just whatever the, opposite, the promise is, I believe to see it. The opposite, yeah, of I want to see it, then I'll believe it. No, I believe to see the yeah. goodness of God in the land of the living. In other words, I don't just believe God. I believe there will be a performance of those things that were told. So when me. you praise God, you're praising His ability. Yeah. His power, perform. His faithfulness to His Word. Mm -hmm. So that's a part of our faith. According to your faith, so be it unto you. In other words, my faith is in God. Mark eleven twenty two. when Jesus said to have faith in God. Mm -hmm. Then in verse 23, he said, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be removed, be cast, see, shall not doubt in his heart. Believe those things he saith, the come pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith. What's we got to get to that verse some more. Next verse says, And what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have you them. You shall have them. That's amazing. So that's, that's how your, you tap into the ability of God. Yeah, His goodness, mm -hmm. God's faithfulness, and His ability. And so have faith in God. Our one translation says, lay hold on God's faithfulness. faithfulness. And He's faithful concerning every area of our life. He knows that we have needs in the earth. He yeah. knows that, and He's made a way for us to yeah. tap into His grace to supply our needs. The next one, Mark, I like this one. I think you really do, too. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. One of my favorites, because really this scripture is God's ability in reference to our finances. It's God's ability in reference to our financial needs, our desires. And so 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that you have all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So really he's talking about God enables you to where you have more than enough and you are able to be a blessing. Here it says to every good work. And there's some good work that God said, I, I'm going to bless you so much that I'm going to flow right through you <laughs> and the grace of God overflow so that you have all sufficiency. And so how do you get to 2 Corinthians 9, 8? Well, verse 6 says, yeah. He that sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He that sows bountifully will reap bountifully. And, and that's such a big risk because you have to sow first. What do you mean? <laughs> what are you talking about That's sowing? a big risk. I what mean, people that? are like, wow, Maybe somebody's God's never able had... to do this. But he said, but... <laughs> What do you, you mean? You sow, and however you sow is how you're going to reap. So you have to really... Financially. Yeah, he's talking about your finances. Yeah. He's talking about your giving. And so a lot of times people won't turn loose of what's in their hand because they're afraid. They can't trust God that he would multiply that seed sown. They're afraid. But when you step they out... They don't believe that would actually work for them. God gives us all... We're, we're made in his image. And if we really worship God, it stirs up this uh, this desire to be a blessing yeah. and to give yeah. out of our finances. And um, I'm thinking of this. Wait, wait, one quote, one quote. Oh, okay. Dr. Lillian B. Yeoman says. Oh, yes. She says, God delights in his children stepping out over the aching void with nothing <laughs> under their feet but the Word of God. So there is the risk factor that you take that step first. And so it says in the Old Testament, when the priest Good. put their foot in the water, the water Come split. On. In other words, the water's still there until their foot goes in. Yeah. And so the Red Sea's still there until Moses, he sticks it right up. <laughs> and so there's a lot of times people are afraid to take that in, initial step that I trust God, I believe God, and so I'm going to act on his word. That's the simplest definition of faith. So he says, if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. He said, if you sow generously, you're going to reap generously. And he says, and God loves a cheerful, generous, hilarious so giver. So cheerfully. Yeah. And then he says, verse 8, and God is able to make all grace all abound. All grace. And you know, it's such a, such a precious thing to have a desire to be generous. And um, yeah. I was thinking because our assistant, Darcy James, 
gave us this testimony, and I did not remember it. I didn't know about it. But years ago, when she first moved to, uh, it makes me want to cry. Yeah, well, to if you Alexandria. Start crying, I don't know if I can finish this story because I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, but she she didn't have too much. She she, put, she, she was poor. Even the poor she, people call her poor. I mean, she had a ro broken down car. <laughs> And, no and, windshield wipers. Yeah, and, and everything she had was in the car. She worked a, a job as a waitress. She didn't have very much money. Yeah, she But it came time for, was that a vision banquet? And that's when everybody in the church so pulls together. gives a special and offering. pledges to give or give a special offering at that time for the uh, vision of the church for the next year. Yeah. And Darcy, she had such a heart to give. To be generous, yeah. And you know, you don't have to have a lot of money to be generous. Yeah. Or give a lot of money to be generous. Yeah. She gave out of her ability. And that was, uh, how much? It was a bunch of coins. You may give out of your she, ability, but you will receive out of God's ability. She brought all the <laughs> coins she had, right? She pulled it all together and she brought it. Yeah. And that was it. That was all she yeah. had. She saw somebody else give like that. So she said, I'm just going to give. Yeah, that was years, years, years ago. ago. And today. And she's been working for us for 20 that, years. She said that was the only time she had to give a coin offering. <laughs> she's been working because for us. Because after that, the Lord just started multiplying. Yeah. Multi but also, she was diligent because you quoted that. Yeah. You diligently seek God. You, you're diligent with the gift of God in you. And, and you put your hand to it and you work hard. And God blessed her. And I tell you what, what a blessing. Yeah. I love that testimony. Um, She's been working for us for 20 years. And so she gave the coins yep. and, and gave the best that she could generously. And then just a few days ago, she, we're building the conference center for yep. people to come from all over the world to hear and to receive the word, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're building the conference center right here on our property. It's going to cost about a million dollars. So we just and said uh, a thousand people give a thousand dollars. And so we've already had a bunch of people given. We're very thankful for that. Yeah. And then Darcy said, well, I want to get in. So she gave $10,000. And so she's not just working here. She believes in the ministry. So and she's she gone put, from the handful of coins. Yeah. <laughs> she said, I'm going to sow $10,000. So that's a step wow. of faith. And so you can imagine the that the promise of God, that God will multiply that seed that is sown. He will make all grace abound towards you. Amen. All right, so hey, let's go. Generosity is a, is a demonstration that you believe God's able to make all grace. Yes. All right, go to Ephesians 3.20 and it, love the whole Woo! chapter. But Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think That's according big. to his power <laughs> that works in you. So God is able to go beyond your mental limitations, yes. even beyond your Dreams. imagination. Yes according to his power that works in you. And so recognizing, wow. yielding, and, and knowing the ability of God that is working in you mm -hmm. takes you beyond your natural limitations. Mm -hmm. And so Ephesians 3.20, wow, that'll just blow your mind. You know what I mean? You lose your mind and get the mind of Christ. In other words, <laughs> your thinking is now challenged with God's God ability. God is able. Yeah, so then Jude 24 says, now unto him, this is Jude 24, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence <laughs> of oh, glory with exceeding so joy. So that's phenomenal. Yes. God is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the glory of his joy. Isn't that the height? That, that's my faith. He is able to keep you from falling. That's my goal. <laughs> and you know, our friend Vicki Sharon, Pastor yeah. Vicki, Dave Vicki, she wrote a song because yeah. they've been pioneering pastoring in Las Vegas for 30 something years. And so she, that God gave her that song. He is able to keep, to keep from me falling. from falling mm -hmm. because the fear of falling will keep some people from ever going forward. Right. And some people won't even hardly leave the house nowadays because they're afraid of all the risk and all the stuff. Well, you were not designed to just stay in your house. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, so, nobody built a ship so it could sit in the bay. 
So I said, well, the ships are safe in the bay, but ships were not designed for the bay. (laughs) Ships are designed to launch out (laughs) into the deep. So he said, stay in your house, you'll be safe. Well, but you weren't designed to stay in your house. Hey, I knew a family, they were all staying in their house. He was staying in his house and he got coronavirus. Yeah, well, he got sick in the house. Come so, on. So, I mean, you, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you I heard about this uh, Texas Aggie that he, he heard that that 90% or something like that of, of <laughs> all accidents happen within <laughs> three blocks of your house. So, he moved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something like that. That's an old, old joke. I like you know, that. Ninety percent of all this happens within three blocks of your house. So he said he's going to move. So, <laughs> so the risk, come on, of of living. The risk of living is what the spirit of faith is about. So a lot of times people try to preserve their life, but they never live. Come on, let's live. So Jude says, God is able to keep you from falling. (laughs) Launch out, Jude 24. And then Romans 14, 4, we mentioned this earlier, that God is able to make you stand in a situation when you feel like you might, you can't take it, you're going to collapse, you may feel like a failure. Mm -hmm. So he says, do not criticize other people when they're going through trouble. He said, because God will help them and God is able to make Man, them stand. Sometimes, Mark, your worst critic is yourself. So sometimes people have, are so down on themselves, lost hope, and think, well, I'm just going to end it I'm all. I'm a failure, yeah. I'm a failure. No, God is able to make you stand, and He yeah. will hold you up. And He has a, a future for yeah. you. He has a, a purpose for your life. Who are you to judge don't even <laughs> or criticize <laughs> others yeah. when He says, to his own master. He said, is he your servant? He said, no. And God said, he's my servant, or they are my servant. He said, and who are you to criticize them? He said, they will stand, Mm -hmm. and I am able to make make them stand. stand. So think about God's ability is able to keep you from falling, to make you stand. And so you shouldn't even really be criticizing yourself too much because your faith is in God and God is able to make you stand. You wow, Amen. what a great lesson today Did you do Daniel on the spirit of faith. And so Daniel 3.17 says yeah. he will deliver us. He's able to deliver us From the and fire. he will deliver us in the fiery furnace. When you stand up for Notice, God, He'll stand up for you. <laughs> Notice he didn't really deliver them from the fiery furnace. He delivered them in and through in the, the fiery yeah. furnace. And so they went right through it. Didn't even smell like smoke. Oh, what a testimony. Wow. You know, we overcome with that testimony. You might be feeling like you're walking in the fire. or The stand that you're making yeah. for God is going to put you in the fire. Just keep standing with God. Hold fast yeah. to your confession Amen. of faith. Because Jesus walks with you and you come through not smelling like smoke. Don't even smell like smoke. Praise the Lord. My name is Pastor Cornelius uh, Tobin. Uh, I'm I'm from Papua New Guinea. Um, I've been pastoring Word of Faith Church for the last uh, 14 years. And uh, It has been basically the Word of God, that the Gospel that has uh, brought us this far. Well, Mark Hankins, uh, I think we got connected on the video. I was in Bible school uh, going for my diploma with Rema, that was 2015. He came on, he was speaking, he was teaching on video. Me and my wife, we went back to school uh, 2015 and 16. And just how he presented the Gospel was different. uh, not just the principles, not just the, the word, but everything. Yeah, he brought the gospel and, and to his simplest form, you know. I went to his meeting in Australia. I don't know Mark, uh, but uh, because we just love the way he, he ministers and he presents the gospel. We were surprised that he called us uh, to come to Papua New Guinea. And uh, that's the biggest miracle in my life. It's another thing to hear the word, but it's another thing to catch the spirit of that word. And so we caught that spirit, and when Mark came, uh, it was like revival, and uh, yeah, and it's never been the same again. And I always say this, and I 
sounded at the top of my voice, it will never be the same again. For the first time, Mark came, you know, uh, uh, his giving was different. I mean, uh, for a new person to come to a place, Mark didn't come to get anything from us. He came to bless us. Uh, he came and not only to bless us with the word, but he came and also You know, I mean, it's a saying everywhere, they're only coming for your money. Mark didn't come that way, you know. He came to bless us. Yeah, he blessed us significantly and help us to build our, the office for the school. So we, had, we host the school and the ministry has helped us to build the, the units for the lecturers. Yeah. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. God is able to work in any situation you're facing right now. The spirit of faith connects you to God's ability. When you're believing for something beyond your natural ability, you can lay hold on God's faithfulness. You're the believer and God is the performer. No matter what you're facing, God is faithful. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. We want to offer you Mark Hankins' brand new CD set, God Is Able. In this set, Mark covers over 10 significant God Is Able scriptures that will connect you to God's ability. When you order the CD set, you'll also get Mark Hankins' book, The Spirit of Faith. This book will show you how to win the war of words. Faith is an act. And the simplest definition of faith is acting like the Bible is true. When you order this God is Able package, your gift of $25 or more will help Pastor Mark and Trina Hankins train pastors around the world. Order today by calling 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Well, I hope you enjoyed the message today, a message of faith. Man, they teach faith unlike any other. They can really get it across to you where it's simple, but it's so deep, but you understand it and it just changes the way you understand faith and the way you walk your own faith out. Now, this week they've been teaching out of the spirit of faith, and this is our offer that we have this week. If you don't have this book, I encourage you to get it. It is a game changer when you need a spike in your faith. If you're feeling a little bit weary, maybe you've been believing God for a long time and you're starting to feel a little bit tired, pick up the spirit of faith. It will just light your fire, strengthen you, and encourage you to just keep going after what you are believing God for. So if you wanna get that book, all the information you need is on the screen. You can go to the website or you can call the number on the screen. I hope you enjoyed today. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.